So there's been a lot of hype going on with the Mark III. Uh, I'm obviously one of them because I really like the printer. Um, but there's it's been a progress. I was supposed to do a one month review yesterday or today, and um, I'm not going to right now. Uh, I think the story's still unfolding as as it was described to me, and I want to kind of wait until things stabilize a bit. But what I am going to talk about is some of the things, calibration, over-extruding, under-extruding, a little bit about firmware stuff, uh, just brushing on it, and uh, my thoughts as we go through and what I've done up to this point and how it relates to what they've done with the firmware. Um, not that I had anything to do with that, of course, uh, but it just was interesting. So stick around and let's see what I found. I'm Ron and this is my place. So since the Mark III was released, it has been, okay, first off, I just wanted to say I've got some changes with my sound, so I'm hopefully not going to be banging on the desk and causing speakers to do all sorts of crazy things. So if there's any weirdness with the audio, let me know, and I can adjust sound accordingly. I think it should be pretty good, though. I've done some testing with it. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. Calibrations and the whole concept of over and under extruding on the Mark III. And then there was also a lot of discussions on cooling. Um, this one specifically, I'm going to be talking about calibrations and trying to get the extrusion correctly. Um, so there was a lot of threads on the Prusa research website, the, the forums there. And lots of talk, lots of opinions. Uh, I'm not here to talk about any of that. What I am going to talk about, there was an interesting file that was thrown out there, which is so simple. I mean, we've all done the extrusion tests and measuring your filament and how long and E-steps and and, and, there, and it all works and there's ways and I've done it all that way on the CR-10, but this one, I was really trying to make sure two things. One, I want to be able to do good functional prints that are exactly the right size. Um, for tolerances, as well as being extruded correctly. And they go hand in hand because you can have something that's got all the correct X and Y and Z E steps, but if you're over or under extruding, you're gonna have different sizes. So what's right, what's wrong? Um, and that was always kind of a conundrum to me. I know there's a lot of smart people out there and there's tons of people that are gonna do it better than me, but this is the way I ended up figuring it out with the help of the forums. Um, so it's this silly little file. Um, I'm gonna figure out who it was that actually uh, found the file and I'll try and put it in the link below uh, as well as a link to this. The concept behind this is very, very simple. This open gap is 10 millimeters. This piece is 10 millimeters. So therefore, if you print both of them together, it's 10 millimeters, right? And they'll go together, or they won't. So the idea behind this is very simple, is you want to basically, if you are over extruded, this gap is gonna be smaller, and this is gonna be bigger, because it's extruding down this way for this piece, and then on this side over here, it's getting bigger because you're over extruded. If you're under extruding, it's gonna go the exact same way. So this was, the, this was a, it, the concept behind this is setting your extrusion multiplier in the slicer. Uh, and we all know that Prusa has their own Slick 3R Prusa edition. And I've been really doing most everything I can as default and try not to tweak on it. But this one was annoying me enough that I started deciding to tweak around and we were trying to figure out if they were really over extruding or what. Because the Mark IIs apparently under extruded by default. Um, I believe is what they said. I don't have a mark to us. So anyway, um, so this was a one multiplier and as you can see, they're not the same. So, but the idea is if you raise and lower your extruder multiplier, it's going to change how these things go together. And at some point they're going to cross over. And when you're at the perfect point in theory, you're going to be able to put the two together flawlessly pressure, you know, just a little press fit. So this was at a one, which was Prusa default. 
Oops. And then I, the next step I did was I went up to, I dropped it down to 0.9, um, 0.91 actually, for whatever reason. I'm not sure why I did 9.1, but, uh, and that's it. I put little notes on them. You can see, I can keep dropping this thing. Um, this was 0.9 and it's too loose. Switch cameras here. So as you can see, this is my notes that are on it. It's just, it's too loose. It's it's wiggly. It's not. It's not. It doesn't have good tolerances. Um, so I didn't like that one. And this was the original one, which was 0 0.1, or yeah, just one one zero itself. As you can see, it just it's too tight. It just doesn't fit. I mean, you could shove it in there and probably break it. So then I went to 0.95. And ironically, big surprise, 0.95 was beautiful. I mean, it's got awesome tolerance. It's, I mean, I can go either direction and they're the same. You measure across these and they're almost, they're just under 10 millimeters in both spots. Um, one of the things I paid attention to was, uh, when I put it, when I printed it, I, I printed them like this on the bed. I didn't print them like this. I, I don't think it would make a huge difference, but I just was trying to keep them completely aligned with each other as I printed to make sure there was nothing else going into mix. Um, so anyway, so I really liked that 0.95. I, I was like, okay, good. This is, this is good. We were definitely over extruding. We're not over extruding anymore. And then I needed to print a functional print for my CR10. And I went ahead and printed one in PETG because um, I hadn't done really any PETG and it fit beautifully. I used the same 0.95 um, and it was gorgeous tolerances. It, it was, I loved it. It was, it's actually wonderful. So I went ahead and printed this and I just, because I had some holes there, I had a um, captured nut that's going in there and I just wanted to make sure all this was pretty good and all I did was I had actually redesigned this and did kind of a, a twist to it um, and added an ABL sensor holder for that. But anyways, so it printed great. It looks like it's going to work fine. I've done some test fits with it. I just haven't installed it yet. So the next thing I did was I printed a couple. Um, and this was all firmware um, 138. I believe is what it was that I transitioned. I didn't really do a ton in one, one three seven, but this is one three eight. Um, I may have done some of the uh, calibrations. That was the beginning of all the testing in one three seven. One three seven, I believe, is what it shipped with. Um, so this was all one three eight, and I did some calibrations. And this basically is a pretty neat little doohickey, as it shows a whole bunch of the tolerances for you know what what sizes should be you got some good overhangs of different distance dis dis distances god i can't talk um so anyways it's just it was kind of a neat little thing had some really good overhang tests which i was impressed with how well it did um so anyways the two of them were pretty much similar i'm not gonna waste time on that so that all went pretty good and i was happy and i started printing some things and then the latest uh firmware came out and i think we're up to one four two or four three um sorry i can't remember things have been changing a lot which is why i'm not doing the uh overall review thing and now this is the the latest video and i decided i was getting bored with the little test cubes so i thought i would print this test cube um and it came out really really nice and it's 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters and it's almost dead on um, I'm really happy with the way it kind of turned out. Some of the things I noticed with the new firmware, because keep in mind that the new firmware, Prusa actually went back himself and redid the drivers. So not just the firmware, but also there's been two or three revisions of the drivers as well, which is the profiles in, in Slick 3R Prusa edition. And the latest one, Prusa himself actually set, because and he said some things where you know more or less he was having issues with it's businesses are growing you know yada 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 you have 
you have to be able to trust the people around you. Um, but he went, went in, did it himself, and it came out much, much better. And between the latest firmware and his tweaks, it's much better. Um, I got really sharp edges now, so it's not rounding off the corners. Everything is nice and crisp on, on all of these. Um, you can't see it very well, but there is still considerable ringing. Um, so I'm not pleased with that right now. Um, but it's still, they're working through it. Like I said, this is not a review by any means because it's coming along every day. Uh, but the more important piece was that I was, if you can see this cooling thing, everybody, well, we call it cooling. We don't really know exactly what the heck it was. But the underside of the bow of the Benchy was rough and cooling issues or over extrude, I don't know. I never could get it to go away, and now with the latest tweaks that he's done, um, it's very nice. Um, there's no issues whatsoever with with that. There's still a little bit of ringing. I see a couple weird layer things going on, but this is extremely cheap, nasty filament. Well, not nasty. It's just cheap um, white filament. And but the big key was it's not a, necessarily a cooling problem. It was something to do with the, the way that the tuning of the slicer. So that made me happy. Um, it seems to be printing well. I'm still watching everything. I'm going to switch cameras here. I'm still watching everything. And as the firmware comes out, I update. As the drivers come out, I'm upgrading that. And just playing it by ear and seeing how it all works out. Uh, once I feel everything stabilized and it, the Mark III is doing what it's supposed to do, then I'm going to probably do a review on it. I'm watching my rods pretty closely. Um, I don't seem to be seeing any indication of scoring like a lot of people have been seeing, um, but I'm keeping an eye on that as well. Um, I did go to Igus bearings on my um, Y axis. And it seemed to it's make it way, way quieter. Um, jury's still out if I'm liking it or not. I've had some odd layer shifts, a couple of them that were undetected, and I'm not exactly sure why. So still trying to figure all that out. I may end up uh, buying some bearings and going back to regular bearings. Um, but anyways, kind of a whole different video. Thanks for watching. I will... Uh, Keep everybody up to date and hopefully everybody's getting their Mark 3s and uh, having a blast. Print everything you can, have the most fun you can, and thanks for watching.